Welcome back to Edinburgh Fest Live. Yeah. I'm Samantha Baines. We're here with your daily dose of the best that Edinburgh Fringe has to offer. We're the only show that comes to you daily live from Newtown Theatre in Edinburgh with a live studio audience. And that also goes out on TV. It's channel 266 Showbiz TV. Now, before we go to the news with Suze, I would like to welcome our next brilliant guest. It's David Barry and Anita Graham. Where is she? Mom, get in here or I'll burn your ear off. Frankie, what's all that noise? You're not her. Who are you? You know me, Frankie. I'm Marion. I look after you. Me? Yes, you, sweetheart, and all our other residents here at Beechwood. What you on about? Where's me mum? Your mum's been gone a long time ago, Frankie. Oh, she's probably gone to bingo with Auntie Shirley. Oh. Let's hope she wins. She can bring me back some videos to watch. No, when I say she's gone, I mean she's gone for good. Oh. She's not coming back. Oh, do you mean she's left me? I don't so who's going to get me grub? I'm starving. Well, no wonder. You were up very early this morning, Frankie. Don't you remember? You had a bowl of sugar puffs. Well, I like sugar puffs and cocoa pops, especially when you mix the two together. It's a sort of breakfast cocktail. Cocoa puff pops, Mummy calls it. That's my little soldier. What is cocoa puff pops? <laughs> I used to be in the army, you know. Yeah, I was a soldier. Yeah, sometimes we had to survive on these little rations in a tin. Ships, biscuits, and a tot of rum and that. Well, I thought that was if you were in the Navy. Oh, shows what you know, doesn't it? And stop talking about food. It's making me hungry. I never had no breakfast. You had a big bowl of sugar puffs. Did I? You sure? I don't remember having no breakfast. Well, I served you myself, Frankie. Look, and it's only 10 o'clock. It's at least another two hours before lunch. Yeah, well, it's not like sugar puffs. It's very filling. Oh, it is when you eat the whole packet. <laughs> and Mrs. Lohman in room six, she really likes her sugar puffs. No wonder she kicked up a fuss. Stupid cow. Much more of that, I'll slit her throat with a cheese wire. <laughs> Make sure you wipe off the gorgonzola first. Hey? Oh, no, it's just a little joke, Frankie. Oi, oi, oi! F.A. does the fuddies round here. Well, I know, but slitting someone's throat... You really shouldn't talk that way, Frankie. What way? What are you on about? Well, about killing people. It's gruesome. Yeah, well, us silent types got to deal with any situation, you see. It's what I was trained to do when I was one of the professionals. Trained killer, I was. Yeah, they used to call me the assassin at Hut 19. Never blasted the enemy with a shooter, though. No, too noisy. What you got to do, you see, is creep up behind a sentry and then say your prayers, Fritz. Honestly, Frankie, what on earth are we going to do with you? What do you mean? Well, there's nothing wrong with your long-term memory as such. If only you could deal with what really happened. What you on about? Well, didn't you used to work for Asda? Working undercover, weren't I, for the organisation? For the supermarket? No, why is that, Dollface? For Mr Big and the firm. <laughs> <laughs> but you do remember working for Asda? Of course I do. Oh, good. Good. Now, can you remember how long you worked there? Seven or eight hours. No, Frankie. I mean, how long did they employ you for? Oh, um, I don't know, uh, six or seven years, till that manager, one with a hook nose, got wise, realised I was undercover, then sacked me. Oh, you can actually remember what he looked like? Of course I can. What do you take me for? Oh, no, that's good. It's good that you can remember details like that, you know, what he looked like and that, but... Can you remember why he sacked you? Oh, because he thought he was Kojak and Sherlock Holmes rolled into one. I told him I was a made man and he'd regret it. But what reason did he give for sacking you? Oh, it was because of that drinks dispenser in the staff room. Well, did you break it or something? No, no, it was because of all them Twix bar wrappers I chucked behind it. Well, why didn't you just put them in the bin? Oh, wise up, because then they'd have known where I got them from, wouldn't they? Oh, I see. So you were sacked for stealing Twix bars? Oh, not right away, no, because he couldn't prove it, could he? I said to him, you won't find my prints on those Twix wrappers, Officer Dibble, because I wore gloves. <laughs> That's when he sacked me. They had the cheek to sack me for eating Twix bars. 
It was their fault for giving me cat food confectionery shelves to stack. Do you mean they shouldn't have put temptation in your way? Exactly. You and me's on the same wavelength, dollface. No, it's Marion. Eh? Well, I do prefer it if you call me by my real name. It's Marion. Oh, yeah, right. No, I think I've just got to go... Oh, and... what time's dinner? Well, it's not for a good few hours yet. Well, I'm starving. I ain't had no breakfast. Frankie, you had a big bowl of sugar puffs. Yeah, well, it's not like sugar puffs is very filling, is it? I want something a bit more... Um, 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 um... Substantial? Yeah, so I'll have uh, double sausage, egg, bacon, mushrooms, chips, beans and a Big Mac. And double size me, sweetheart. And do you think you'll still have room for a pudding? Yeah, so I'll have uh, baked jam, roly-poly and custard with ice cream so it runs in the hot custard and melts. <laughs> Did your mother used to make you that? Yeah, when I told her to. Oh, <laughs> Frankie, I bet you were such a handful. Where was it you used to live? I live at 46A Cooper Street. And it's time I went home. Mum will be expecting me. No, your mum's not there anymore, Frankie. Frankie, no, you live here now. What, what am I doing here? This ain't my home. I live at 46 A Cooper Street. Now, calm down, Frankie. Uh, calm down. Look, sit down. You can't Frank... keep me here no, against my will. Let me right. go. I promise. No, Frankie. This is your home now. No, it's not. It is. You live here now. Well, well, stick it up your ass. That's what I say. Stick it up your ass. <laughs> And if you want to find out what happens, how Marion <laughs> copes with Frankie, you'll have to come and see the show. David and Anita. <laughs> if you come out of a seat. <clears throat> Thank you so much. So that was an, an extract from the play. Could, yep. could you tell us, I think we got a bit of an idea there, but could you tell <laughs> us a little bit about what the play's about? Yeah, the play is about, I played a character called... Just grab a microphone. Oh, yeah. I played a character called Frankie Abbott in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, in uh, Pleaser. Pleaser, yeah. And it then went on to a spin-off, Fen Street Gang. And uh, I just suddenly thought, what would happen if, you know, played it in real time, if he's now 70 years old and he's in a care home? And Marion, played by Anita, is looking after me. That's right. Brilliant. So how's it been going? You've got five-star review, I hear. Five Critically stars. acclaimed. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, it started out as sort of quite a broad comedy and it's got sort of, it gets a bit darker, you know, because he's losing his memory. So, yeah. Yeah, and he was always a fantasist and she learns the truth, you know, what his life may have been really like. And, and what was it like sort of trying to deal with dementia, sort of coming up with the idea of the play and performing it every day? Well, it's sort of difficult in a way, isn't it? Because obviously there are elements that are very funny, but it's sort of touchy subject as well. But mm. I suppose you can laugh at anything, really, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> and have you had a lot of people coming to the show who maybe have personal experience of it? Have you had any sort of feedback from people? Oh, well, you have, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yes, quite a lot of people. And I, I did some volunteer driving once, and I used to ferry people to homes, and I used to see a lot of what went on. But I didn't realise I'd be writing it then, you know, back yeah. then. Yeah. Oh, wow. So where can we come and see the show? Um, well, you can see the show five o'clock at the Newtown Theatre, yeah. And uh, we're also doing another uh, Fringe <coughs> Festival at Camden in North London. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It seems like it sounds like a wonderful play and I'm excited to see it. Oh, it's David you. and Anita. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You. Just to remind you, you can tweet us throughout the show at edfest underscore live. You can also head over to the website www.sbctv.co.uk. Now it's time for the very lovely Suze with the news. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Sam. Yeah, that's right. I'm Suze with the news. News with Suze. Um, things have been getting more and more dismal in my life the past few days. Um, so, you know, I'm here to try and deliver good news. <laughs> happy news. That's what we all need, a bit of happy news. Um, yesterday I got a text from my landlord um, saying that I was having to be immediately evacuated. Um, my house is getting repossessed. Uh, so that was that. <laughs> So I'm here to deliver happy news. Happy news for everyone. My cat died last week. I know, thanks for the awe, but it doesn't bring mist back, does it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough about me. Um, <clears throat> I'll uh, be professional and get on with the news, shall I? That's what everyone wants right now. Some good news. 
Yes, thanks. Thanks for that. So, uh, without further ado, grief for dad killed in crash. It's not a great start. <laughs> right, what else we got? Uh, track star Liz let her tenant live in leaky, ramshackle, freezing cold house unfit for humans. That sounds a bit like the house that I've just had to move out of. <laughs> so I slept homeless last night. Um, slept rough. I'm just waiting to see if someone can maybe put me up for a few nights. Maybe someone in the audience? You're cold. You're heartless. The lot of you. You're cold. <laughs> You're cold. Thanks for that. Right, what else have we got? Uh, the weather's pure fish. You know when you're having a shocker of a summer when it's raining eels. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I heard a bang and everyone panicked. Four dead and dozens hurt and blasts in popular tourist spots. What else have we got? Son's fury after his abandoned dad dies. UK tourist and let um, Michael Bubley admits finding it difficult to balance his career and family life, but has his cat died this week and has he been made homeless? No, he hasn't. So Michael Bubley's doing all right in life, I think. <laughs> I think that's about all the news I can handle today, viewers. Thank you for being so incredibly supportive. Back to you, Sam. <laughs> the news with Sue's. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed our highlights of the Fringe Festival. Don't forget you can catch up on all our previous shows. Just head over to YouTube and search SBC Edinburgh Festival Live. I've been Samantha Baines. Thank you very much from all of us here at SBC. See you soon. Action. <laughs>